All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 64. So the variable I want to find the value to in this equation is x. And for my solution, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 4 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 4 to the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. However, m and n are interchangeable, meaning this can also be written as a to the power of n to the times m. Now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this should be equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So x to the power of x to the power of 4 to the power of 4. In this, I can think of x to the power of 4 as m and 4 as n. So this turns into x to the power of 4 to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now, 64 to the power of 4, I can rewrite as 8 squared to the power of 4, which turns into 8 to the power of 8. Now, if I have something to form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a equals b. So in this case, x to the power of 4 is equal to 8. And to solve for x, I'm going to take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to positive or negative fourth root of 8. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have x to the power of 8 minus 121 is equal to 0. Now, what most people would think to do to solve this equation is add 121 on both sides. So then I would get x to the power of 8 equals 121. And then, since x is to the power of 8, take the 8th root on both sides to get an answer of the 8th root of 121. And this method is actually wrong because there are actually many more solutions than just two to this equation. There's many more. So we want to find all of these solutions to this equation. So how are we going to do that? Well, our first step is to rewrite x to the power of 8 as x to the power of 4 times 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 times 2 is equal to x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 121, which we can rewrite as 11 to the power of 2. And the reason we're going to do that is so now we can use an important algebraic property that states that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x to the power of 4, and b is 11. So I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 times x to the power of 4 minus 11, which is equal to 0. Now, from here, I get two equations. I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 is equal to 0, and x to the power of 4 minus 11 is equal to 0. And we are still not done yet, because to solve this equation, people are going to think, oh, add 11 on both sides and take the fourth root. But we're going to do the same thing we did with our original equation. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times 2. 
and now I can rewrite that as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And 11, I'm going to rewrite as the square root of 11 squared. So now I can use this property again. So I get x squared plus the square root of 11 times x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. And again, I get two equations. I get x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, and x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. Now, what I can do is for x squared minus the square root of 11 equals 0, I'm going to add the square root of 11 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x squared is equal to square root of 11. And now if I take the square root on both sides, square root of x squared is x, and the square root of the square root of 11 is the fourth root of 11. This is positive or negative. Now for x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, I'm going to subtract the square root of 11 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. So now I get the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative square root of 11. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of the negative square root of 11, I can rewrite this as negative square root of square root of 11. So now this is the same. So now if I take the square root on both sides, I get the square root of x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. Or sorry, the square root of negative square root of 11, which I can rewrite as x is equal to the square root of negative 11 to the power of 1 half, which is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 half to the power of 1 half. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So I get x is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 fourth. Now going back here, I have x to the power of 4 plus 11 equals 0, so I can subtract 11 on both sides, and I get x to the power of 4 equals negative 11. Now I can take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to the fourth root of negative 11, and this is positive or negative. 